Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza here, and welcome to episode 100 of Gran Turismo 3, the ultimate driving simulator. I'm pretty excited for it. We have good story time tonight, and the other cool thing is, is we started up a brand new tournament, and we're gonna blow right through it. It really shouldn't be much of a problem at all. We were also able to finally finish out getting all the gold trophies in that fucking Gran Turismo All-Stars thing because the Rome circuit was being an asshole, so we had to bust out the b And I got the job done. And now we're doing uh, the Type R meeting with this uh, Type R NSX that we bought a little while back. And uh, it's quite nice. It's really, it's really, it's really handling the job just the way that I would have wanted. You know, when, when, you, when you take some time off, you kind of want to have a smooth transition back in. And, uh, and this has definitely made it just the way that I have wanted it to be because I'm not having to stress out too much. You know, we're getting a nice little easy crash course back into the good old the good old times here. And so while we're busy doing this, let me let me kick off our episode 100 special by telling you a story about a very very unsettling and strange dream that I had a few nights ago. I'm I'm glad that I still remember the majority of the details cuz I was going to write it down and I totally forgot to do it. But luckily, it's been one that it was it was obscure and weird enough that it allowed me to you know I it's just stuck in my head for a few days, and so it's it's a it's a good one, kind of creepy too actually, and also totally totally played on one of my biggest phobias. So that's another reason why it was extremely unsettling. So in this dream that I have. I'm I'm kind of sort of living like a you know I'm I'm basically living out um, kind of like a Resident Evil sort of situation realistically like it's but well it, it's it's kind of it's it, okay I can't talk <laughs> that's gonna go for a weird screenshot for somebody but I'm ha so this is how it works this is how it works it is kind of a Resident Evil situation to an extent. Like, I'm the one that's that's playing, obviously, the, the primary character in this. And there is kind of like some weird sort of, you know, zombie overrunning going on. But, so in this, I, I don't, like, I'm not playing a game out of the franchise. I'm just in, like, this weird kind of sort of desolate locale and I'm running around and, and, you know, I'm finding weapons and every once in a blue moon I'm you know, I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm getting attacked by zombies, and I'm, you know, taking care, ter taking care of them accordingly. You know, grabbing a shotgun and blowing one in the face that just comes crawling out from underneath a fucking picnic table or whatever, and it's just like, ah, die, you fucking vile fiend! You know, even though that's not really what a gun sounds like when you shoot it. <laughs> if guns sounded like that when you shot them, that would make them so much less <laughs> uh, intimidating. It actually make them a lot funnier, despite the fact that you could shoot something that sounds like this, but it could also, you know, end somebody's life with that. <laughs> you know, Kenneth, he got killed by the fart gun. He, it sounded so funny, but he got shot in the chest and his heart exploded. But it's hard not to laugh at it because it's a fart, and every time farts happen, they're funny. But my husband's dead. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Well, you know, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, you're you're trying to fight off the zombie menace and and whatever happens, and and go into like this really crowded area because I'm trying to meet up with with you know the the resistance. You know, there's kind of the band of freedom fighters that are you know trying to you know find a safe escape away from all this stuff. But they're also acting completely separate from you know like the the military and you know the government issued other you know force that's dealing with the with the zombie menace and so you know the the resistance people are, are kind of independently looking for shelter but away from them because they're kind of beefing with each other so it's it's sort of this weird situation like you're fighting the zombies but you're also fighting the government it's it's this weird sort of thing and so I'm working kind of independently like I'm still with the resistance movement or whatever um, but yeah, but still kind of operating on my own time. And 
while I'm out and about trying to get to this little hub city sort of thing, I end up getting blindsided by this this one zombie that was like hiding in this this vertical garbage can. It was like one of the regular dumpsters, but it was turned up on end. And he just fucking did like this ha ha sort of thing, and he just pops the door open, and he ended up uh, he ended up uh, like scratching me in the eye. He didn't he didn't actually bite me, but he he just barely barely like fanned me in the you know across the face and got me in the eye. And and so I was like ah shit you know, but I ended up you know using like my bayonet thing that I had attached to. Uh, to my assault rifle that I had picked up off the ground and I ended up, you know, tearing into his neck and I sliced him right square up the middle and his his head fanned down like a flower opening. It was fucking awesome. But now I I was like, fuck, now I have this ordeal going on. You know, now I'm I'm infected by the zombie. And uh and so I and I ended up I was like, well I can't just stay out here and die. So I, you know, go to the hub city and maybe there'll be a doctor there that, that can help me. And so I get there, and you know I run, and I'm like, I need a doctor, and you know, and the people there are freaking out. They're like, Oh my god, he's been, he's been infected by a zombie, and uh, and you know, people are trying to kind of sort of excommunicate me or whatever. Like, you know, nobody was trying to kill me, but everybody was like trying to get the fuck out of here. You know, like we don't we don't want the government finding out that you're here, because uh, they have this the technology to know who's infected and who's not. And so you know, they're trying to usher me out, but one doctor decides to take me in and it's my dad <laughs> but you know but he's not my dad like I know I know like in the back of my mind like I know it's my dad but in the character is not my dad <laughs> which is also kind of weird and so you know he's like he's like you can come in here he's like I'll, I'll take a look at it and you know maybe I can fix you up with something and so I go in there and uh, he's like you know you're definitely one of the first people that I've had to do eye surgery on. Like, normally I'm just I'm just a regular kind of you know patchy up doctor, but you know I like I I did take some some uh, some surgeons you know courses and stuff in college before this whole thing broke out, you know, and obviously many years later because you know he's my dad and he's not my age, <laughs> so um, so he's like, well, you know, I'll, I'll lay I'll lay on the bed here and I'll, I'll I'll get my equipment and we'll we'll take a look at this and see what we can do to you know obviously not have the government come storming in here and take you away and do crazy experiments on your butt for some reason and so lay me down on the table and he's he's looking at it and, and I'm you know kind of looking at at his at his uh, reactions and he's just like oh boy this this is not looking so hot he's like all right I'm gonna he's like I'm not gonna put you under because I just I don't this anesthetics way too strong so he's like I'm gonna have to do this while you're straight up awake and so you know it is what it's gonna be and so I was like, "All right." And he, I was like, "Do you think you can do it?" And he's like, "Yes." Uh, he's like, "It's gonna be kind of a, it's gonna be kind of a, an, an unorthodox procedure in order to do it, though." He's like, "Because in order for me to do this, I have to, you know, get your whole, I have to get kind of your whole eye out of the socket." And I was like, uh, "Say what?" <laughs> he's like, "Well, the, the scratch was like really deep in there, so he's like, I gotta kind of take the whole eye out a little bit." And I was like, "Wait a minute." He's like, so if in order for that to happen, I gotta strap you down. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't like being strapped down to beds. It's not okay. And he had like this crazy sort of, you know, straps that just like autumn, like they had like a mind of their own. They like came out from under the bed and like latched me into the bed by themselves. It was like this weird automated bed sort of thing. And so now I'm kind of freaking out. And he had this. <laughs> Instead of using like some crazy super sciency device that like carefully goes in and you know like peels up my eyelids and gently pulls the eye out of the socket a little bit so he can do the procedure, he does it a much more crude and hard and and seriously not cool way of of you know getting the eye out where, from where it needs to be so he can do the thing. He takes a fucking lunch tray, just like a gray, dirty lunch tray turns it on it you know at a corner angle and just fucking shoves it right square into my eye socket and it like not like super hardcore but he you know he decided that that's how he's gonna pry my eye open is by taking a fucking dirty ass gray lunch tray and just cramming it into my eye and you know have in my eye just eventually just goes and and pops right out of the socket and I'm watching this with my, you know, I'm sitting here looking at this. I'm like, ah, what are you doing? It hurts so bad. He's like, shut up. 
It's like, this is the only one, this is the only way I can do it. I don't have any other thing I can pull this out with. And I was like, I was like, okay, okay, all right. I trust you. And my eyes just like dangling there. And, and he, he's like, he's like, he's like, Tiffany, I need you to come in here and take a look at this. And I need you to hold this eye while I go through the rest of the procedure. And, and just out comes this random person. You know, she wasn't there before. She like materialized from the corner of the room. And it was all of a sudden just there, and she just walks over, and she's holding my, you know, virtually disconnected eyeball in her hands. And she's not saying a word. I mean, she's, like, hardly even paying attention at all. She's just kind of just, eh, whatever. And he grabs, he grabs, like, this weird saw blade looking thing. It almost looks more like a, it looks almost like a pizza wheel in size, but it's, like, a much more, it's like a serrated saw blade looking thing. And it didn't have, like, a motor, so he wasn't, like, going hardcore into it, but he uses that thing to, like, peel up, like, a couple of layers from my eyeball. And he's got to go in and, like, manually extract the, you know, the bacteria and the virus and the infected, you know, flesh or whatever. Um, and he, he goes in and he's able to, you know, get most of it out. And uh, he, he's like, alright, so I, I took out the stuff I needed to take out and I'm going to give you this special medicine that looks like a giant golf ball and it's a chewable but it's got all this extra medicine and stuff in there that's gonna sterilize the eye and it's gonna you know destroy the bacteria and you should be okay he's like but the only way that I can keep the remaining bacteria before you know from spreading while it's still trying to be this you know while the antibiotics still trying to kill it he's like I have to put this special wrapping on your face uh, you know so that the so that the stuff doesn't escape and I was like Okay, uh, that seems, you know, sensible, I suppose. And so he puts, like, a fucking beekeeper's mask over my head and cuts a hole in one of them so that I can see out of, you know, out of one eye and just leaves and, like, duct tapes the rest of it down so I, you know, other, you know, so the rest of the eye is covered. And it just looks absolutely heinous visually. <laughs> it just looks so stupid. And then he sends me out, and he's like, all right, you should be ready to go. He's like, just... You know, just be careful out there, you know, you never, they're so unpredictable, you don't know what they're going to be able to do. And so I was like, well, you know, thanks a lot. And I get up and, you know, I'm kind of a little discombobulated from the operation, and, you know, my depth perception is terrible. And not 15 seconds after I walk out of, out of, you know, this medical tent or whatever that I was in, all of a sudden the the government comes storming in there's like seven or eight guys that come in with like full kevlar armor and and fucking you know crazy machine guns and shit and they knew that i was in there and there was a guy that walks in with like a suit and tie and and like a megaphone and like a clipboard and he's like we're looking for adam foster we know that he's been infected and we're gonna we're, we need to eliminate him you know for for everyone's safety and, uh, and it just turned into this fucking war, and all of a sudden, all the people that were there that were trying to usher me out, all of a sudden, they're like, Get out! Like, you gotta get out of here! Run away! We'll take care of them! And it just turned into this crazy-ass firefight where people are lobbing napalm, you know, napalm grenade-looking things, and Molotov cocktails, and using their shotguns and pistols and, you know, Colt revolvers and all this shit, and it just turns into, like, this Wild West fight where people are just mowing each other down while I just, you know, book it out of this, uh, out of, like, this, uh, you know, access tunnel or whatever. And I'm running out, you know, out of the back of this town in through this field, and I, you know, I'm running straight down the way, and I can see that there's, like, this weird little, it kind of, like, funnels down into this opening towards the end. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of my ticket out of here, and I, and I saw there were a couple of zombies that were going towards the way, and, and so I'm, you know, I'm kind of picking them off, very poorly as I'm going by because I can't really line up my shots very well because my, my vision's so jacked up. It's just like everything is, everything seems to be in the corner of, of my vision and I just can't line it up very well while I'm running as fast as I can not knowing if somebody's behind me, you know, trying to, you know, pick me off with a sniper rifle or whatever. And so, you know, I'm running, I, I get down into this area, you know, I get into this area where it kind of funnels into and it's kind of like this tunnel area with, you know, this risen area above and you can't really see anything and I'm running down this thing as fast as I can and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this is where this dream gets fucking weird as if it wasn't weird enough already then all of a sudden 
I ended up stopping dead in my tracks because on both ends of this risen platforming area, it just engulfs in flames. It just engulfs in flames and there's zombies all over the fucking place. And at the end of at the end of this area, I see this giant huge like barrel of just waste. And and it, and all of a sudden out of this giant barrel of waste, <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding rises fucking Hexus from the from the Fern Gully movie. Hexus in like his creepy ass super super scary demon form that he took on at the end of the movie for like 15 seconds before they killed him with plants or whatever. He like rises out of there and you can hear Tim Curry's voice in there and he's doing like the <laughs> thing that he does and he's just engulfed in fire and he's like and he's the one that's controlling the zombies, and he sends them out, and they're trying to get at me, and I'm trying to shoot him down as quickly as I can, and and he's just looking at me in this in, in his like fiery mass form, and he's slowly climbing out of this barrel, and he's coming at me, and he's just doing his maniacal demon laugh, and giving me that weird, that weird creepy ass like just you know skeleton smile, and it's so fucking scary looking and I'm losing my mind because I don't have enough ammo on me to you know to fight off the zombie menace anymore and and I get to a point where I realize like there's no way I'm going to come out of this and so I took I took one of my you know big ass like super explosive pipe bomb looking things out of my pocket and I was like well here we go and uh and I was like I might as well go out with an explosion and hopefully that it does something and right as I'm getting ready to pull the plug on, you know, pull the, the pull the pin on this grenade, I just all of a sudden hear this and I see this huge ass like nuke coming out of the sky that somebody that had been fired from the town that I was just in. Like they just fired it using like a you know, like a mortar type of thing or whatever. Like a mortar launcher. And I and I knew what it was. I was just like, oh my god, somebody fired the the fucking BFG Nuke 5000 whatever the fuck it was and so I saw like this little tiny you know kind of uh, like a sewage pipe on to my side and I just dove into it and I and I you know flipped around and looked out and just saw this huge wave of just like nuclear whatever just wash over the area and all and you just hear this no I will kill you and it, it was in Tim Curry's you know, demony voice, and you just like all of a sudden you just hear his like his body and all the zombie bodies just like bubbling from the the temperature of the of the nuke and just it just turned into like this disgusting you know biological mess that just kind of washed down on the ground right in front of me, and it was oh so fucking weird, and. Then, like, after it happened, this, this is, like, the very last part of it, and then right it, after it happened, I, you know, I didn't hear anything for a while. I just, it, I kind of waited there just to make sure the coast was clear. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> and this is what pulls it all together. I, I, uh, you know, I kind of crawl out of there, which was a poor idea because, you know, I got my hands all over this nuclear waste shit. And I crawl out of there, and all of a sudden, the, the, the sun that's, you know, on the screen there it had, like, a starburst of sun that came out. And, uh... And I don't know why, of all the sound effects to have, this is the one that comes out. I, I walk out of there and I look around, and and I, was, and I was so excited that everything, you know, all the things were dead. And I took my gun and I pumped it up in the air and I was just like, yeah! And the sound from the Nickelodeon show Figure It Out, when, uh, when you actually, you know, when the people would guess something correctly and they had like the, the victory horn where it goes, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> It made that noise, and then all, and it was just like this voice came over like this PA system, and it just goes, "You did it!" And it, and it just went, "Yeah!" And then <laughs> it just constantly kept doing that stupid ass, do 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 do. And I fucking woke up. I, I woke up laughing. It was it was funny. <laughs> it went from being like this really just creepy, unsettling, playing on my fear of having things in my eyes thing in you know being right on the verge of my own death in a zombie apocalypse where both the government and the zombies are trying to kill me to somebody f 
from the annals of town saves me from imminent doom with this crazy nuclear explosive that washed over Hexus and, <laughs> and, and the wave of zombies and leaving just this crazy puddle of, of waste in, in, in its wake. And I get out and I get the fucking figure it out victory sound <laughs> with like this weird kind of like it sounded like a kid's voice but not really. It almost sounded like a warped version of Jim Gaffigan, <laughs> you know, where he does the you did it kind of thing with his weird high-pitched voice that he does all the time. <laughs> and it was just, it was like, it was a, it was a tale of two stories, man. It went from fucking morbid zero to a, to 100 from, to like this weird, you know, accomplished children's <laughs> cartoon, you know, 100 to 150. Kind of thing. It was bizarre as shit, but it was something else. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, the the whole like, I was super, I was super fucking freaked out about the eye thing though, because like just imagine somebody instead of finding a comfortable way to take you know to me you know, pop your eye out of your socket to peel back some layers of whatever, they just take a just a blunt object just a lunch tray with rounded corners like and it's it's kind of thick and he just kind of just bleh, you know shoves it in the eye just for your eye to go poop oh, oh I hated it not good at all not good at all so with that said my friends I hope you enjoyed episode 100 I mean we won a couple more races I don't know why the Integra somehow finished and the other ones didn't I don't know what you do about that and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Here's to a hundred more, because we're still not really halfway done with this game yet. <laughs> we will be at some point. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. But here's to maybe another hundred episodes. Well, that remains to be seen. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. You know, I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, we will continue back next time with maybe more stories about other strange dreams that I had that make no fucking sense. So until then, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching. You guys have a good one, and I'll check you out next time. Bye, guys.